Welcome back. We have Vanessa Sabo returning on the show today from the Canadian Silver Coin Exchange. It's great to have Hi, you back on the thanks, show. Susan. Merry thank Christmas. You. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, we're talking about a very cool subject, something that Vanessa has come to love, uh, <laughs> yeah. and that is about coins and rare coins and their yeah. worth. Yeah. Um, yeah, the uh, history of Canadian circulated coinage is very interesting, and so I thought it'd be really fun to talk about some expensive coins. I think everyone loves the story of the person that goes to the thrift shop and buys the most, you know, ugliest painting they can find. They spend five dollars on it. Turns out it's a forty million dollar painting. So I want same, that to yeah. <laughs> and the Why same can be now? same can be said with coins. These can be found. So the first one I want to talk about it's the 1948. Canadian silver dollar. Mm -hmm. um, this coin, they made about 18,000 of them, so there's still a lot um, that are out there. And according to the dealer guide for that coin, you can expect to get about $700 and up for something like that. Why is this rare? Um, they made 18,000 of them. And that's so not a lot? Just, no, not in the, in the grand, scheme. grand scheme of things. Yeah, mm. it's not a lot at all. Um, the next one, here's the 1921 five cent. Uh, the interesting thing about the year 1921 with the five cent is that same year we switched over to making our nickel five cents, so we stopped making them in silver. The other interesting thing is in 1921, um, there was a very low demand for coins. So in 1929, the demand picked up and the mint decided to melt all the stockpile that they had. So a lot of 1921 coins were melted. Um, on that, um, on that uh, five cent piece, you can expect a dealer to pay you about $2,500. $2,500. Okay, don't go to the next picture yet. I want to talk about this. <laughs> what are the chances you would actually find this floating around? Like you get change back from Tim Hortons, so you've got the 1921 five cent yeah, piece. Yeah, that's probably that not going to happen that okay. way. I would think, you know, digging in old pockets, grandma's attic, um, mm. thrift stores, things like that, um, just in people's collections. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you want to go really high end, you got to start looking at the auctions. But what percentage of the population knows the worth of these coins? Like you do. Yeah, I do. What yeah. are the chances that you could go into a thrift store and find something like this? Um, is, I is think possible? it'd be the same as, as finding a painting. You don't know, you like it, that's why you bought it. Right. And it turns out when some people start saying to you, oh, that's really interesting, you want to find out more about it, it piques your interest and you're going to search it out. Okay. So. All right. Let's move on now. Yeah. All right. Um, so this 1921, again, the 50 cent coin, this is like the king of all the coins. Um, it's extremely rare for the same reason as the five cent. Um, to give you some idea of price, uh, one in this kind of condition, a uh, mint state coin, sold for over $240,000 at auction. $240,000? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, for 50 cents. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the next one is a 1944 five cent, and it's known as a Tombac. Uh, what Tombac is, it's an alloy that's made of uh, brass and some copper. Um, the interesting thing during this period of our history was that it was World War II. So um, in order to aid the war effort, copper and uh, nickel, went into making ammunition and things like that. So we made our coins from steel, our five cents, and we made them from Tombac. Um, 1944 in particular, we only made 8,000 of those. Only one's been certified, so who knows where the other 7,999 are. They're at the thrift store. Right, and you can expect $15,000 for that coin. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, we have one more here. Yes, finally, the 1936 penny with a dot. This is like the mother of all coins. Okay. Um, to give you an idea, only three are known to exist. And one sold at auction a few years ago in a proof condition for over $400,000. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you have a, a quick moment? I can tell you the yes. reason for the dot. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can see it there on the screen, it's mm -hmm. right under the nine and the three, little oh, tiny dot. Oh, yes, it's the smallest dot. Yeah. Okay. So they put that dot on the penny, they put it on the dime, and they put it on the quarter. And the reason being was at the time, uh, the King of England had died and his immediate successor was his son, Edward VIII. Um, Edward was the king and he reigned for 225 days, which is extremely short period of time. And this is because he was in love with a woman who had uh, been previously divorced and he wanted to marry her. Uh, they gave him an ultimatum, you could be king or you could get married. He chose to get married. So he abdicated. That's exactly right, yeah. Um, that meant his brother, uh, George VI, would become king. He was the stuttering one. Yeah, exactly. Which was the movie. Yeah, there was the movie, made. that's yes. right. Um, so uh, the Mint was very concerned about having enough coins to go out into production. Um, they were afraid there'd be a gap. So what they did is they put a little dot on the coin, signifying that they were actually 
being used for 1937. So they just reuse the coin, put a little dot on them. Really? Yeah. You've done your homework. You know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I find it very interesting. Yeah. It's history. Mm -hmm. So check your coins. If your grandma or grandpa have them floating <laughs> around their attic, you might be you able never to know. A, buy a house with cash, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, We're going to take a quick break. Thank you, Vanessa. But Vanessa's coming back for another segment, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Vanessa Sabo joining us from the Canadian Silver Coin Exchange. We're getting a little history lesson in some of the uh, <laughs> rare coins that are out there. It's great to have yeah, you here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so it's Christmas and it's the time to give. And I don't know about you, Susan, but for me, I tend to struggle sometimes and want to get that person that has everything, right? And um, so, you know, typically grandparents and parents and, you know, grandchildren. And uh, so I thought, since I love coins so much, why not you know, give you some kind of DIY ideas around coins? Um, so here's one here um, that I did. What it is, mm. is I simply took a frame and I attached a coin to it. Now the significance is I went um, into the archives of a newspaper mm -hmm. and I found the birth announcement. So you just find the birth announcement of your loved one from that year and I have a 1956 coin and I just double um, sided tape stuck it to it, put it in the frame, circled the birth announcement there. And the other thing I found so fun about this was if you read part of the article in there, it also shows that a house only cost $9,000 <laughs> back in 1956. Wow. So I thought that was pretty fun. What a great idea to personalize it's, it's a gift. It's personalized, exactly, and it means something more. Tell me right? this, if you wanted to do this and say you're going to give it to a loved one that was born in 1945 or 1946, where yeah. would you go to find a coin? Where do yeah. you go to get those? Well, there's always places like eBay. There's always um, mm. coin dealers. It's a relatively um, inexpensive gift to give. Um, especially in 1956 is not a rare date. Now, if it was a 1948 <laughs> birthday and you wanted to give a dollar, well, obviously, that's one's gonna cost you. Right. Right. So but hopefully your loved ones are born on not expensive <laughs> years. Not expensive years, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, now, what do you have okay, there? Okay, so next I thought was mm. something fun, probably to do with the grandkids. Um, my grandparents did a lot of traveling, and so they'd always bring back world coins. And I thought it was so fascinating to look at the coin and see what the domination was, where it was from, and how different everything was. So I came up with this idea to just use a binder and take the coins, and you can put them in these little two by two cardboard holders, mm -hmm. and then you can look at them and put down you know, the year of the coin, you can put down uh, the country that they're from. And it's a really great teaching moment and a really great time to spend with your kids, um, teach them the geography, history. Um, I have some Canadian coins here, some um, tokens. It's really interesting. There's a, a meat ration from uh, wartime. Wow. Yeah, very, very interesting. Cool. And you can do the same with the banknotes. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. same idea, you put down the country, the denomination, and they display really nicely and they'll keep really well. Nice. That's fantastic. And yeah. you know, it gets them away from electronics, it right? Does. It's something different. Yeah, I mean, and something like this, I mean, what year is this? It's quite old, like 1906. Wow. Look at how big their money is. What kind of a wallet do you have? I know, holding it's, that it's stuff? German, yeah. Your, your wallet would have really to be the size of a mini iPad. Yeah. <laughs> However. For sure. And then you can decorate the front of the binder. And this is just all, you know, the binder and stuff from the dollar store. Um, if you go to a coin dealer, a coin supply shop, um, you can find the two by two holders for it. So that's really nice. What a great um, idea. Another thing that I have for you, and I do it for more for my kids, mm -hmm. uh, relatively inexpensive right now with being what the price of silver is. Mm -hmm. um, I like to drop a little ounce of silver into their stocking. And it's just something that they can, you know, put away and put aside. And so I brought some examples of um, this is would be our Canadian maple. Beautiful. Wow. Here. It's yeah, it's very out. nice. It has a nice little maple leaf on it. I don't know if we're going to get a shot, but <laughs> maybe just hold it up for here. I can hold it up okay. for you. You're yeah, gonna... for sure. Here we go. Yeah, and Canada makes, makes really beautiful coins from mm -hmm. the mint. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one, and this came from our 2010 Olympics. Mm -hmm. Really nice. I love that. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's really pretty. And then you can also do ones from around different places in the world. So every um, developing nation will have a, a bullion. Okay. So this would be Mexico's. What is this called again? Um, so it's an ounce of silver. Okay. It's known as, as bullion. Bullion. I, yeah. In Mexico it's called that? 
Um, I, I believe they go by like a peso. But... Uh, yeah, the peso, but yeah. bullion. Bullion, what's the bullion? bullion. Yeah, so it represents um, pure silver, mm. so it has to be 0.999. Okay. Canada and Austria have the most pure silver in the world. We go by four nines, um, so it would be 999.9. Wow. Yeah, so we have the purest. Quick question before yes. we go to a break, because I know we're almost out of time. Of but, um, somebody gave me a coin, like a collection of coins from like 2010 from the Olympics, la oh, la la. Yeah. Would that ever be worth something? Because you know they're so mass produced that really, exactly. is that ever going to be worth anything? Um, yes and no. I mean, it really depends what kind of price silver goes to. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's why I mean you can get gorgeous, beautiful stuff from the Royal Canadian Mint. Lovely packaging, nice and shiny, brand new. Especially this time of the year, you can get snowmen and snowflakes. It's all very nice. But in the end, if you really want to give something that's going to keep its value, um, an ounce of silver. An ounce of silver. Yeah, that's that's the good thing. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. What a great uh, lesson for us today. <laughs> Thank this has you. Been fabulous. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you. And, and to you. Everyone, Merry Christmas. Yes. If you would like to go and visit Vanessa, she is located on Tronquil, right near Tim Hortons. Uh, 455 Tronk Hill specifically, yeah. so absolutely uh, take a stroll by if you'd like to. Five-star jewelryexchange.com as well. She knows her stuff. We're back in two minutes. Stay with Thanks. us.